Hi guys. Thank you today for joining me this week. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do. Speak to me, speak through me. I can only prepare the, as much as I can. And Lord, you know how important this topic is and how kind of flipped upside down you gave it to me as. And Lord God, I pray that we will not only be the us that we feel inside that we are, but the us that you've designed us to be. And Lord, I pray that we embrace our full, the full essence of who we are. Speak to me, speak to me. Hide me behind the cross. Let every word permeate the soul of every spirit that is watching this and will be watching this in the future, Lord God. I give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi guys. Um, so today's sermon is called, This Is Me. Um... I, uh, anybody who knows me knows I love um, musicals. I have since I was a little girl. I was listening to um, the music from The Greatest Showman, which is absolutely one of the best recent musicals um, ever. It came out in 2017. It is actually about um, how the circuit got started. It, it's, um, it's about, it's about how the circuit got started and how it came forward. And in the movie, there is the 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 main character of the movie I heard uh, P T Barnum I think it's P T Barnum P T Barnum um, is a dreamer he's a total dreamer um, and at the beginning of the movie uh, P T Barnum loses his job. And then he buys a theater. And his dream is to uh, create, create a show that people will come to and be entertained by. And then to achieve his dream, he gathers together these uh, group of uh, people um, who who some would consider weird. That there is a woman with a a beard. There is an extremely tall man, and a couple of other people. And so they call themselves the oddities, and he takes this cast of weirdos, people that nobody wants, people that are just cast-offs in society, and creates this wonderful show. And through all the ups and downs of this movie, the oddities just come out swinging. This group of characters that nobody wants, they just seem to always come forward and save the day. Even when um, P.T. Barnum starts getting full of himself, the oddities kind of bring him back to himself. And 
God wants me simply to say today, you may have been considered odd and you may have been considered a cast off, but God has a plan for you. There's a reason why you were created as loud as you are. There's a reason why you are, were created as quiet as you are. There's a reason for it. God, God didn't create you the way that you are just for, um, just for happenstance. Oh, that's your personality. He's creating you a, um, the way that you are because he wants to use that particular gifting, that particular bent, those particular likes, those particular dislikes to his glory, to his, um, for his purpose. And I think we live in a world that we just try and copy people and he just wants he just wants the, um, us to be the way that he created us. You know, there is this um, huge prevailing mindset is be who you are and whatever. Be, do what you think, um, be what you, be what you want to be. But I'd say this. Don't be who you want to be. Be who God has designed you to be. Because the thing with humans is we don't know who, who we are until we get to know who, who created us. Um, and this whole thing about be who you are and be just do who who you think you are it's wrong because really in the essence of who we are we don't know who we are until we get to know jesus it is only then we can discover who we truly are and who he's designed us to be and i think um until we rise up and understand we are a gift of God. We are a gift from God. We all have gifts and we all have talents that he will use to serve his purpose if we let him. I think we'll always have trouble if we don't understand that. See, we're always into copying who we think is great, what athlete we think is great, what um, preacher we think is great, what, what person we think is great. And although mentoring is necessary and emulation for time can be helpful, you can't live there you can't live in a state of emulation because if you live in a state where you're always copying people, you'll never get the true essence or value of who you are. And he just wants to un you to understand how great and how valuable you are as a person. Not athlete so-and-so, not pastor so-and-so, not bishop so-and-so. You, you are great. You are magnificent. You are a work of God. Just think about this. Um, out of all the sperm in the world, your dad and your mom created you. They got together at some point, whether married or not, or whatever. They created their sperm and their egg created you. But, although they physically got together and created you, you were a thought in God's mind before your parents ever got together. 
So the timing of your conception is all planned out. Like everything, you are not an accident. I don't care if your parents uh, got it on in a Chevy and your mom turned out pregnant. You were still not an accident. Whether your parents were married, whether they were not, whether you weren't raised by parents, whether you were raised by uncles, aunties, the foster care system, whatever. You were still divinely orchestrated to be here by God. That sperm and that egg were, were divinely mandated to come together to create you with all your sins and all your gifts and all your attitudes and all your flaws those those things about you that you think are detriments they're really attributes to the purpose that God has for your life God has great plans for you beloved and he wants you to know today that you are important and you are significant and how you feel about things are important is important and what you think about things your thoughts your emotions that's all important and you are significant and because there are so many people think who think that they don't matter and I just came to tell you today from my little computer room in Toronto, Canada to tell you that you matter. Yes, you sitting there in your living room. You and there is nothing you can do to change God's mind about you. A lot of people um, think they're so bad think what they've done is so wrong that God will change their, his mind about them. God will never change his mind about you. You may be a little disappointed in what you did, but it doesn't mean he stop he stops loving you. God will never stop loving you. He wants you to embrace who you are embrace your loudness embrace your um em embrace those things that he is he's designed in you and he wants to let you know that what he's designed in you will come out and to stop running from who you really are because a lot of people run from who they really are thinking that it's not good enough, they're not smart enough, they don't know enough. Stop that. You are good enough. You are smart enough. You do know enough. And what you don't know, you can learn. And what you, what you need, you can get. All you need is the willingness to know that whatever God's put in you, he will get out of you. And he loves you too much to give up on you. And he will never, ever, ever give up on you. You are so valuable. What you have in you, you don't even know fully yet. You don't even, you can't even fathom the things that God wants to do with your life. You can't even fathom what God is raising up in your life. You can't even fathom the people that God is using to come into your life and, and turn it around for his good. And the people that you will affect if you embrace your calling. Okay, now when I say embrace your calling or embrace who you are, I'm not talking about this world thing 
that says just be who you are and and do what you feel and uh, do that. I'm not talking about that. When I say be who you are, I mean be who God has ordained you to be. Because sometimes who we think we are and who God has ordained us to be are totally different things. And unless we can or tap we can tap into the God ordained person, we'll always be struggling. We'll always be, well, who am I? Oh, I'm this today. I'm that today. I'm I'm a rocker today. I'm a church person tomorrow. Uh, what whether and then we get lost trying to be this, trying to be that, trying to be a screamer, or trying to be when I say a screamer I mean a preacher. I don't mean anything else. Um <laughs> just thought I'd clear that up. We try to be a sp screamer. We try to be quiet. We try to be reserved. We try to be loud. Just be who God has created you to be, despite the co color of your skin. Um, for example, I I'm a black woman, as you all know. But growing up, I always liked rock music. I always loved rock. I loved Creed. I loved all this kind of rock music and pop music too. Um, and pop music was and rock music was all done by white people. So I felt that I wasn't black and I wasn't, I had to listen to uh, black music to be black. So I hid, uh, not hid, but I was kind of embarrassed uh, when, when it got to music because I, well, I like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and um, Creed and all these rock guys um, and other people around me were listening to like Stevie Wonder who is awesome by the way now I love all kinds of music but then but I I didn't embrace who I fully was because I didn't think that people would like me and I said uh, all that to say it doesn't matter if people like you it matters if you like you and it matters if you know that God loves you and be I think that we spend too much time trying to copy this person trying to fit into some mold when God is saying I want to bust the mold wide open. He's saying, I don't want there to be a mold with you. He's saying, I broke the mold when I created you. There is no mold. There is nobody like you. And he's wanting you to embrace that. He's Once you embrace that, there's no telling what heights, what depths he will take you through once you embrace who he has created you to be and how you how you find out who's who he's created you to, to be is develop a relationship with him and it goes beyond i believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that jesus is lord um once you do that that's just the first minute step and then you must walk with him, talk with him, get into a church that preaches the, the gospel, get into the church, get into a church that preaches the truth of his word, 
get into a church that that loves you and can can foster what God has uh, put in you. Get into a church that will pray for you and will go to bat for you. Get into a cell group or some churches call them an e-group. Some churches call them uh, just a friends group or whatever, a life group, a group of people who can support you and walk with you and talk with you and be there for you and pray for you because you, your greatness is found in God, but it's fostered in community. I'll say that again. Your greatness is found in God, but fostered in community. If you have something on this inside of you that God is giving you, and it's inside of you, but you're not fostering it with somebody, you're not you're not sharing with somebody. I'm not saying to share with everybody. I'm saying to get a select group of people in with you so they can pray for you and foster you and just be there for you. But be care but on the other hand, be careful who you tell. Because sometimes when God gives you a vision it's not for everybody to know. Sometimes, usually, there's an incubation period that it's just, he just wants it to be um, for you and him. And in that incubation period, it grows and grows and grows and grows until it's mature enough to really spread um, to the people who need to know. If you let your vision out too soon, if you let your baby out too soon, it may miscarry and not get to grow into what it needs to, it needs to grow into. Be yourself, but be careful who you let into that inner circle. Be very selective, beloved, about your inner circle. And people may, may mean you well, but be like, may not be able to handle what's in you. And it's not that they're bad people, it's just that they don't have the capacity to hold what's in you. And you've got to make sure that you have people around you who can be honest with you, who can tell you that's a good idea, but it needs some tweaking, or that's, that's, that, idea, that idea needs to be worked on a bit, or, or, to give you further suggestions like, have you thought of this to get there? Have you thought of this to get there? You know, sometimes you just need an ear to say, you know what, this is what I'm thinking. How do I get there? And constructive criticism is very necessary. There's a different difference between constructive criticism and destiny killers. And constructive criticism are people that you love and that you trust and can tell you the truth even though it's not something that you want to hear. They can tell you, oh, Rachel, slow your roll or Oh, Sandra or Michelle, slow your roll. Just, just, 
just slow down a minute, think through it like this. Whereas destiny killers say, no, it can't happen. Um, they cut off the idea right away without any thought, without any, without any consideration. Get destiny killers out of your life. They're just leeches there to kill your destiny and make themselves feel better. Because sometimes people like to kill your destiny because they don't have one and they're, de they're jealous of yours. And they want to make themselves feel better so they kill yours. Be careful of those people and get them out of your life. Whereas people that have constructive criticism can say, that's a good idea, but have you thought of this? Maybe you should do this as training before that. And, some, and sometimes people can see what's in you before even you can. Because I know with my mom, in some sermons, she can pull out of me stuff that I don't even know is there when she watches some of my sermons. Hi, Mom, if, if you're watching this. Um, she can, her words really pull out stuff that I don't even know is there. And it makes my preaching better. Now, she's not a preacher, but by the fact of her giving me her constructive criticism, it makes me better. It makes me know that, hey, maybe I need to work on this here, or maybe I need to do this here to make me better. And people with constructive criticism always want to make you better. Destiny killers always want to make you bit bitter and kill your vision. Um, so, so, come out and be who God has designed you to be. And I sense there are people that have been hiding in the shadows, that have been doing things in secret, that have been writing vision, vision notes in secret, and that have been seeking the Lord for their purpose and, and they've, they've uh, got things written down on paper, pages and pages of vision notes. And the Lord is saying right now, get those vision notes together. It will happen and now's the time. The Lord is saying, it's been too long. You've been out, you've been in the shadows for too long. You've been in the background for too long and it's time for you to step forward and say, this is me, like it or not, this is me, loud and proud, this is me, quiet and de demure, this is me, I'm, I'm a church boy, or this is me, I'm a rocker chick and I'm proud, whoever you are, Come out, stop hiding, stop pretending to be who you're not, and don't be who you feel, but be who God has created you to be, and be who he has ordained you to be from the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus, I pray, I declare that right now, people are, are coming out of the shadows, People that have been in the background, people that know who they are, they are designed to be, people with ideas and designs and business ideas and book ideas who've been writing them down on paper and who have been uh, praying over them and seating over them and all that, they're coming to the forefront and I praise you and I praise you and I will And I will bless you for those people. Because there will be a generation that will say, This is me. 
here I am. Like it or not, devil, here I come. Here I come, I'm taking over the kingdom. Here I come, and with God's help, we are changing lives. There are out-of-the-box churches getting ready to come forth. There are out-of-the-box business ideas getting ready to make people millions of dollars. And you can turn around and say, it was Jesus. It was Jesus that did this. It was Jesus that gave me this idea and the strength to do it. Don't be afraid. I sense that fear is holding some of you back. And I would say today, don't be afraid. Embrace what God has put in you. Embrace the fact that you're that you're loud and a little different. Your difference is what God is wanting to make to make as his significance. What I mean by that is your difference that has been laughed at, has been scorned at, is going to be a significant part of God's plan. Don't throw away your difference. Embrace it as a significant part of God's plan. Too many people try and hide their differences thinking that, oh, they're weird and whatever. But embrace your difference. Not just to be different and weird. Embrace your different embrace your difference because God is going to use that difference for his significance. What you think is not significant, what you think is weird, God is stirring up his gold, God is getting ready to use, God is using. There are people watching you that you don't even know. There are people watching you in church and online that you don't even know and God is getting ready to use in your life. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. I know the road seems hard. The ro road seems heavy. The road seems lonely and rough. But God is getting the glory. This is you. You're meant to be in the foreground, beloved, not the background. You're meant to be giving the ideas, not pa not this passively, uh, working at a job and getting paid and where other people get rich off of your ideas. You're meant to be giving them. You sense that you've been dreaming about that. And the reason why you've had such unrest in your life the reason why you can't sleep is because you're not meant for that. You're not meant to just keep keep um, in the background and working for somebody else. You're meant to give the orders. And I'm not saying to quit your job. I'm just saying be aware that God has... God has ordained you for greater. And when he's ready, he will burst you out onto the scene and people will say, what? I didn't know that person in HR was doing that. I didn't know that mom was baking those delicious cookies in her kitchen. I didn't know that that person was coming up with that idea. I thought they were just this kind of person, this one thing. Um, what people need to understand is sometimes they're not just one thing. They have a multitude of gifts that they haven't kept, um, that they haven't, that they haven't tapped into yet. And that gift that you think was that business idea that you think was dead. And that gifting that you think was dead is now coming back to life. It's not dead. It was just dormant. There's a difference between dormant and dead. Dead is like 
it can't come back anymore. It's it's gone. Dormant just means it's resting and it's gonna come to life. There are, I declare that all the dormant gifts now are coming back to life. I declare that all the dormant ideas now are coming back to life. I declare that the Spirit of God is resting on every heart, every spirit, and every dormant gift, every dormant idea, every dormant uh, ministry idea, every dormant church idea, every out of the box idea that you have, ha have had is coming to, to life. I declare that you will rest tonight. You won't be restless because the Lord is planning to do something that you will, will have never seen coming. You think that all those ideas, all those dreams in your head are just dreams, but they're not. Beloved, they are prophetic. They are prophetic utterances that you cannot utter. You, you wonder what's going on. You, you wonder why you're sitting in church thinking, Oh my gosh, there is more for me here. Yes, there is more for you. And that's the Lord telling you that there is more for you and that he is raising you up. And all those dormant dreams that you have had um, are coming to life. That time when you used to, used to be a teen and sing in that girl group, sing in that band, and your dream was to be a singer, Baby, it's not dead. It was just dormant and now it's coming to life. You have no idea the gifting, the wealth of information, the wealth of instruction that you have to give to people. You have no idea that that propensity to fix furniture is a world-renowned business just waiting to happen. Yes, God. New level. New level. But be warned that with this new with this new level will come a new devil. But God says, don't worry, with that new devil, I will create a way of escape. Every door will be opened. Every, every way will be made. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you praise. Uh, beloved, hang tough. And know that the Lord is with you and he will not let you drown. He will not let you drown. He will not let you drown. He didn't give you those goals and those dreams and that vision when you were a little girl for nothing. He's going to use it for his glory. It's not, it's not dead. It's just dormant. And it is a part of you that you've been laying waste for a long time. It's a part of you that you thought was dead. But that young little girl that was so wild about singing and that man, that little boy that was so enthralled with how the cabinets were made and how to make a drawer is coming back. That dream is not dead, it's just dormant. The reason why it was dormant, because at the time, you didn't have the know-how. You couldn't handle what God was going to do, so he had to put it away. Now, that dormant vision, that dormant dream is rising. In the name of Jesus, it's rising. 
it's rising it's rising hallelujah lord i praise you i lift you up god you are doing some wonderful things through this woman thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord in the name of jesus i declare to your vision and to your dream rise up and walk i declare to your vision and to your dream rise up and walk and i declare that every devil in hell that has tried to stop you that has tried to tell you oh you're too old it's no good you can't do that is scattered is null and void in that vision and that dream will come to pass i declare that not many days hence people will want to finance your vision people will want to finance your dream I declare that the ministers and pastors that you've been looking up to, they'll find you. They'll find you. They'll they'll find you. I declare that the furniture stores will call on you to make their furniture. And I declare that record executives will, when you send them, when you send them the demo tape, they will call you back and they will offer you a record deal. I declare that what, what was dead is now alive. What was dormant is now living, will, will now thrive. I declare the spirit of the thrive. I declare the spirit of thrive right now. I declare the spirit of thrive right now. It will thrive. It will be a success. I declare that Joshua 1 8, you will have good success in whatever you do from this day forward. Failure will not be an option. I declare that you will have good success in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. You made a way. Where there was no way. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. Bye, guys. See you next week. Take care. Love you. I'll be praying for you. Bye. I'm seeing you move. You move. You move the mountains. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again.